Vertical integration is uh, when you have control over nearly all of the elements of your business or you are attempting to do so. Vertical integration is incredibly important because we were going through trauma outsourcing to other people. And I say trauma as a very, very serious word, like the pain and frustration that you go through because you don't have control over something that is so critical to your success and to the investor experience is traumatizing. <laughs> um, and, you know, there was just um, some, you know, real pain um, involved in those scenarios. And so one by one, we were just like, we have to bring this in house. We cannot allow this to happen. This is not the way we're building a business. This is not who we are. Um, this is not the product that we represent. And just bit by bit, we're just like, bring it in, bring it in. I don't care. I know we're going too fast, but we have to do this for us, our reputation and our investor experience. Welcome to the Freedom Show. Hey, you got Flip and Danny here. We're live in the studio. Live, 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 live. <laughs> I haven't done that in forever. Uh, but welcome to another exciting episode of our podcast, The Freedom Show. Yeah. So Flip and I um, wanted to come to you today and, and talk to you about vertical integration. Um, I know that we do a lot of banter usually at the very beginning, but like I want to dive into this topic because it's so incredibly important. Um, and it's something that we did on accident, uh, but it's proven to be um, that it will be the reason for our gigantic, amazing champion style success right um and why we attract so many investors to work with us um and why um we are achieving all the things that we're achieving right um, so before you before you start though yeah i want to say something that you don't even know i'm gonna say yeah is uh, i remember when we started the company in our house yep in westchester yep. and you showed me a video yeah of the guy in florida I don't need to say his name, but anyway, he ran a company that's very similar to what we're running now. Mm -hmm. And he took a video and he walked up and down the hallways and he walked into each office and showed, introduced everybody that was in each office. Yes. And when he went into the property management company, he introduced the people that were running the property management company. And when he left and he walked back in the hallway, he looked right at the camera and says, he says, always make sure that you own your property management company because no one will take better care of your properties than you. And I'm like, wow, that's so amazing. And, and just like, wow, this guy is so awesome. He's got all these companies all under one roof. Man, oh, if we can only get there someday. <laughs> little, little did I know, less than six years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. So this is something not a lot of uh, people talk about. And mm -hmm. the reason that they don't talk about it is because it's very difficult to do. Um, it takes years. And uh, to, like, we've done it in six. And um, that was crazy insane. Like most people would not be able to do it in six. Yes. Um, I thank our team. The reason that we've been able to do it is because of the team and the people that we've got. Um, we always say people are our greatest, um, asset. Um, we aren't here, uh, because of Flip and I, we are here because of the team, uh, that we have brought into the company and the care that they have, uh, for what we're doing, um, mm -hmm. the vision, um, and how we are helping other investors. Um, so vertical integration is, uh, when when you have control over nearly all of the elements of your business or you are attempting to do so. <clears throat> so Flip, you want to share uh, when we started the company and, and uh, you don't have to share why we did it. Just share like the order of the companies as we built them and what each one each, each one does. Yeah, so we started out with uh, the Turnkey Company. Yeah, because uh, that was the the meat and potatoes, uh, and uh, we immediately went into renovation. And you said not to, to say why we did. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we immediately went in, went into renovation, uh, and then after renovation, we were sort of forced to into property management. Mm -hmm. We were heading that direction. <laughs> we just were moved there faster than we had anticipated. Um, and then uh, then acquisitions. Yep. Um, and well, I think, I think that's the main uh, parts of this that uh, that as far as I mean, we also have brokerage, uh, which came as well as the uh, uh, property management company. Yep. Um, and then I think that's it. Yeah. The, yeah. The fund and syndication. Fun, well, the fund and syndication. That's yeah. not really a part of the vertical integration, Correct. but it right. was just our last company. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you nailed it. Uh, so, uh, as Flip went through that, you could, I could see if you're watching on YouTube, I could see <laughs> the gears turning in his head. Like he, he was remembering the stories and the trauma that well, we were going through. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was hard to <laughs> sift through so quickly. <laughs> and why we built each of those companies. So <clears throat> this is exactly the point. Vertical integration is incredibly important because we were going through trauma 
outsourcing to other people. And I say trauma as a very, very serious word, like the pain and frustration that you go through because you don't have control over something that is so critical to your success and to the investor experience is traumatizing. <laughs> um, and, you know, there was just um, some, you know, real pain um, involved in those scenarios. And so one by one, we were just like, we have to bring this in house. We cannot allow this to happen. This is not the way we're building a business. This is not who we are. Um, this is not the product that we represent. And just bit by bit, we we're just like, bring it in, bring it in. I don't care. I know we're going too fast, but we have to do this for us, our reputation and our investor experience. And so one by one, and we just kept on hiring the right people to come in and lead each company. So it wasn't all on Flip and I. I mean, Flip and I were juggling a lot, um, but we did have people in each company that we could lean on so that we would sit down and we would collaborate mm -hmm. and we say, here, th this is the vision. This is what we want to build. Um, let's, let's talk, let's figure out um, how we need to do it. What's the game plan. And as we bring um, uh, this into uh, realization, uh, let's, talk about the challenges that we're um, facing and solve them together. And so literally it was Flip and I and each team member as we brought e every single one, it would it'd be constant. Here's our challenge for today. And here's how we're going to solve it. Here's our challenge for the next day. Mm -hmm. And every single day there's challenges. Um, when you get to, uh, when you're building a business, you have to understand that um, uh, the wins are sometimes hard to I uh, feel right. because you're, you're faced with challenges over and over and over and over. And if you don't have the vertical ing integration piece, then you're faced with a challenge that you can't solve. You've got Ooh. no control over it. Yeah. That's right. Well, well put. Yeah. So, um, that's why it's so, so important. So before this podcast, we wrote down seven things that we felt was, um, just right off the top of our head because this pain is real and yes. it, it lives in us <laughs> of what we've gone through and what we've <clears> created. <throat> um, and uh, we want to share those seven things with you. Um, and there's also three things at the end that, that kind of results in, um, those seven things all coming together. So, right. um, we're going to go ahead and hit on, uh, number one, you want to start? Yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, I sort of touched on it before, you know, what that one guy said is, you know, you always make sure that you're in charge, that you own the property management company because no yeah. one will take better care of your properties than you will. Yeah. Uh, and that's number one, loss of control. Yes. Yeah. So not having that control, um, uh, was going to cause Flip and I to fail at building what we were, mm -hmm. um, uh, dreaming about what we wanted to build. And at the very beginning, I don't even know that we had this dream. Um, the dream kind of grew um, bit by bit, but it was partly because of, oh, we had to bring that in. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we're bringing that in, probably down the road, we're going to bring this in mm -hmm. um, because we can see how control is helping us. Um, and it, it, it just happened um, naturally. But that la la loss of control would have meant failure to us. And at the very end, we're going to bring that full, cir full circle because the other people that were affecting our business um, were going to lead us to number two, which was they're causing us a loss of money. Mm -hmm. And they're not only causing us a loss of money, but they're causing our investors a loss of money. So um, where we were affected in the loss of money was the contractors mm -hmm. um, and the rehab. So we would go in and <coughs> we'd get the bid. We put the put the contractors under contract. We'd have the scope of work. Um, and they were so horrible. They'd have to do things over. Mm -hmm. They would miss something and go, oh, we need to change order. Oh, you know, this happened. They wouldn't show up. The timeline mm -hmm. went oh, longer. Yeah, yeah, um, that it was necessary. Um, uh, uh, <coughs> materials and things were being stolen from the property. So the renovation piece was hurting us in terms of money. So number two, loss of money. The property management piece was hurting our investors in terms of loss of money mm -hmm. because there was uh, property mismanagement. There was financial mismanagement. We would look at numbers and be like, oh, no. And we would have to go to bat for our clients um, on behalf of them just because we're like, this is ridiculous. This is not right. You know, and we knew it like we're in the business so that we knew how to read the financial st statements. We knew what was wrong. We knew what needed to be fixed. So we just went to bat um, for um, the investors. And that was really, really, really crazy. And it got so bad. We were actually, we made complaints to the board, um, to the realtor <laughs> board. We actually sought out an attorney. We started having some meetings about what are we going to do? We ultimately um, sent out an email to all of our clients when uh, when we got to this point and said, hey, this is what we're, gonna, we're doing and this is why. This is mm -hmm. not to throw anybody under the bu bus or point fingers or assign blame. That's not what we're here for. Um, we're not, not here to trash other companies. What we're here is to take control and fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And so we brought everything in house. And fortunately we had, um, uh, um, Chris was part of our team at that point in time. 
Yep. And so he was ready to take in all of that um, business. Um, and then not too much longer, we actually uh, acquired another property management company. Mm -hmm. uh, because what right. some people don't realize about property management, it's not a money making business. No. <laughs> and you're serving two masters, you're serving <laughs> the owner and you're serving the resident. Um, so it's very hard to keep both of them happy all the time. Um, so it's a very, very tough business to, uh, to take on. And so uh, because it's not a money maker, um, it involves a lot of people and mm -hmm. a lot of help to be able to do it well. And so your overhead ends up being uh, far greater than your revenue when you only have like less than 100 doors, right. you know, even 200 doors. I think you're probably close to breaking even between that that, you know, 200 to 300, um, depending on what you're charging and what other fees that you have. And we didn't believe in fees. You know, we didn't want to like nickel and dime our investors. We just wanted to be a better property management company than all the other ones that we tried outsourcing to. Um, so we ended up acquiring another property management company so that we could get our doors up um, it, to a point where it made us profitable so that mm -hmm. we could hire more people and just do a better job. And that was its own adventure of bringing <laughs> on another property management company um, and those people. Um, it was all a big, big learning experience. But um, for the sake of this podcast, we just want to say number two is loss of money. And it wasn't just us. It was also our investors. Right. So as two of the point importance of vertical integration. So number three flip. Lack of flexibility. Yeah. So um, lack of flexibility is really uh, how many times um, have we uh, been talking to a investor and they're like, okay, well, you know, this happened or this is what I need or, or I need help with this. And, and we are able to do something unique because we have all companies, right? right? In-house, yep. under one roof. Yep. Whereas, um, let's just say somebody bought um, 10 properties at once and they said, hey, I would really like a break on my property management fee because I bought the you know something in bulk. Oh, mm -hmm. we can't go to our property manager and expect them to do that, but we have everything um, in-house and we can expect our sister company to say, yes, I would be happy to do that because we both <laughs> have the same vision of a great customer experience for our investor. I don't think they have a choice. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they do. They they push back on me every now yeah. and then, um, and sometimes I let them win <laughs> because they're right right? right. right. Um, you have to be in a position, and you have to be a leader that's willing to let people push back and and go. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. You made a really good point there. Yep, so good point, good <laughs> I'm going to back off. Um, uh, but yeah, we still have that flexibility. We, we have the opportunity to sit down with team members and talk about things mm -hmm. and have all of our interests pointed to the investor and the company. And so whatever decision we make, if it's a win for the investor or a win for the company, we get to do it and we get mm -hmm. to do it easily as opposed to bringing somebody else in. Um, so that's, that's the flexibility piece. Um, so vertical integration, um, uh, uh, number four is you have, cost savings. Um, and so what I mean by this is we've got all of these companies. So guess what? When our, With our overhead, you should see our overhead tracker. It's hilarious. Um, we have an overhead tracker and it's got companies and tabs on every on, on, on the overhead tracker. And every single company is a different tab. And then we have a summary tab at the very, very front. And um, we've got people who work across all the entire uh, family of companies. Um, so that's the advantage is uh, you get to hire one person that can help maybe one, two, three, four, maybe all six. Yep. It doesn't matter. And so you have one salary that gets split among the companies that that person is working for. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can do this, but we won't go into all of them. Um, the key here is that we have more control over being able to hire more people because we have more places to put them and save money because, um, for example, um, our main freedom uh, uh, marketing company that's marketing our turnkey product doesn't have to um, carry the weight of a salary if that salary can be shared by three other companies. Right. So when I talk about our overhead tracker, like if you look at all of our employees um, and team members, uh, then you're going to see like um, uh, Tiffany's our transaction coordinator. And so it'd be Tiffany and she works 60% in this company. And then on the next tab is a different company. And Tiffany, she works, you know, 30% in this company. And then another tab, she works 10% in this company. Yeah. So we we look at that and we're able to take Tiffany's, uh, you know, uh, salary and uh, allow every single company to share 60, mm -hmm. 30, 10 of her salary. Um, so it's it's just carried you know, throughout those companies. So the cost savings um, are huge. Um, we have other opportunities, like because we have property management and we have renovations, we've got opportunities to buy materials in bulk. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the opportunity to store a warehouse with the materials that we use to renovate the property. So the property management company can very easily replace things because we have everything um, uh, in storage and in the warehouse. Um, so keeping those property standards in line, um, all are 
are uh, have to do with cost savings. So that was number four. Flip. What's number five? Well, before we go on, I think Tiffany's going to start to get a complex because we're always we using we keep, we're, we're <laughs> always using her as an example. <laughs> we know she's always yeah, yeah. listening to the podcast. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, that, you know. that there's there's Shout also out, more Tiffany. than sixty other team members, but Tiffany just happens to be the one that's <laughs> she's always top of mind. I wonder why. Um, <laughs> all right, I do so, talk to her a lot. Yeah. Uh, number five is accountability across all companies. Yeah. So this is a big one. I'm trying to think of a funny story. Um, uh, Chris, I talk about Chris uh, a lot too. I, I talk about the people I talk about are the people that I interact with so much. Right. Um, uh, well, good so, thing. Uh, Chris and Steve are going to be the, the ones that we tell the story about here. So um, Steve, uh, when he was uh, moving up into uh, in the company, he was first our punch list um, guy. And then he moved into the renovations manager. Um, at the time, Chris was managing IPM. So, uh, think of, think of it this way. So, uh, renovations is taking care of a property and doing all the renovations and they're passing it off to the property management company. Property management company then has to put a resident in that property. Mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, Chris or somebody on his team is walking a property and going, Oh yeah, no, no, this is not done. Um, there's thing, there's issues here. And then there's that, Oh, but we're one family of companies. I know I don't want to call somebody out. Um, what do I do? How do I handle this? And we have gotten to the point where we just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And literally there's like this, you know, nope, it's not ready. <laughs> Push it back. And then Bulldog uh, ends up getting it back. They have to go back out. They have to fix whatever happens. Um, and then uh, there was uh, one time where it was the opposite. Bulldog had handed off the project. It was good. Um, uh, uh, property management, they didn't have time to get somebody out there. And in between the time that they got somebody out there and the time it was handed off was enough time that something happened to the property. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what happened to the property. It might've been a storm or something like that, but something happened. Um, and uh, so uh, when they went to push back to our renovations company, the renovations company like, uh, 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 you ain't pushing it back to us. You guys <laughs> signed off. You said this was done. You passed your quality check. We are out. And so guess what? IPM or property management company was now held accountable to what happened to that property mm -hmm. to get it fixed so we could get the resident in there. Um, um, so um, that accountability across companies is fantastic because yes. can you imagine us going to an outside property management company and try to hold them accountable? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, what a pain in the butt. And we'd I, probably think we try, be, I think we did try that oh, with five did. different companies. <laughs> we did. Uh, we'd be eating all the costs 100% of the time, right? But now no. it's a shared responsibility and each company has to stand on their own as far as profitability and what they're doing, what their expectations are. So they know, oh, crud, you know, I screwed up and that's mm -hmm. now going to cost our company. Um, and that, you know, when we look at our or PNL, um, we go, hey, what's going on over here, IPM or BDR? What are you guys doing? Um, and they start evaluating the challenges that they had that last quarter and start fixing them. So um, that accountability across companies is pretty huge. Mm -hmm. All right. So did you do that one? I did that one. Yes. Okay. I'm so, doing that. I do the odd numbers. Oh, okay. All right. Number six. That's funny. <laughs> it is, yeah, isn't it though? Okay. Number six um, is efficiency. Um, so uh, an example of, of efficiency is what we always say, right? You can run down the hall. Yeah, exactly. You, you run down the hall and say, hey, property management company or hey, acquisitions team or hey, renovations team. You know, every, everyone's right under one roof. Yes. Uh, and it's just so nice to yeah, have it that way. It is. Um, also, our systems. Right. Uh -huh. Like Podio is one example. Yep. Almost every single company uses Podio. Yep. And so our ability to communicate within in the team, mm -hmm. also Google, the, the Google suite, yep. we have Google chat and mm -hmm. Google meets, um, our ability to communicate across all companies is huge. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because everybody can, you don't have to call up the property manager to go, what's going on with this property? What have you done? You can go just tap into the system and just go, Oh, okay. I see. Or you can run down the hall and just ask them if mm -hmm. you can't tap into the system. Them. Same right. with Bulldog. You can access the spreadsheet that says, um, here's where we're at on the renovation. Here's how long we anticipate it's going to be um, so that the sales teams knows what's coming down the pipeline. So when they're talking to investors and they go, oh, you know, I'm just looking at this sheet. It looks like in the next like two weeks, we're going to have this or this mm -hmm. um, because we'll have people calling and saying, hey, I really want a multifamily property. So you have one and the team can just look and, and check yep. it out. So that efficiency across the board of communication and ability to serve our investors because we can just jump in into the systems mm -hmm. and be able to see mostly everything. And what we can't see, we can run down the hall and, and, and find out what it is or jump on a very quick uh, you know, video chat um, with whoever it is because everybody prioritizes the family of companies. They're mm -hmm. not like, I work for property management and I'm not going to make time for you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Renovation Company. Yep. Right? They know that we're, we're one umbrella. We're one team and everybody 
prioritizes the team as a, as as a whole because that's what serves our investors. That's what serves our company and the success mm-hmm. um, that we're um, um, going. Well, well, even the the meeting we had yesterday. <clears throat> in that meeting yesterday, we had uh, a member of FFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, the yes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's Freedom it, Family Investments, the yeah, but the fund and syndicate yeah, syndication he's, he's side. He's part of, it. of the, the fund and syndications. You had the CEO. The CRO, the vice president of uh, client uh, or investor relations. Uh, uh, right? is, uh, is no, that, client. That, what's, what's his title now? Yeah, yeah. Chris, we're going to kill you because your title is so yeah, long. Man, it's a vice um, president. I think it's <laughs> vice president of customer relations and asset management. Yeah, yeah that. Yeah, so he was there. Uh, we also had uh, one of the heads of the Bulldog, which is the renovations company. Yep. We also had uh, an integral part of IPM. Which is our property man? That was in one meeting. And the fi- financials, uh, um, the fund, uh, fund financial accountant, um, mm-hmm. uh, he was in there. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, and he yeah. was there too. And they're, they're all part of the team. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, uh, but all in different companies, yeah, all but different all companies. in one yeah. meeting because in that yeah. meeting we yeah. needed different uh, pieces yeah. of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. How hard is it to get your attorney and your tax? Um, guy together, oh right? Into one meeting. They're, I mean, they're like they're like two sides of the of a <laughs> magnet. You can't push them together. Sorry for those of you that are just listening and you can't see me. I'm trying to put my hands together. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's a perfect example of you know how difficult it is to work with an outside company and get them all in one place. Where all we have to do is set meetings on a calendar, and everybody again, priority number one is the family of companies, not your company. So we all jump into whatever meetings that we need to be in. We mm-hmm. make that a priority um, for the company as a whole, for our investors. As all <clears throat> and then number seven is you yeah what? and it all comes down to teamwork it's the teamwork the vision uh and and i uh, like the the word the, the coherence you know because yeah. it's, it's making it well because you can have a team but if the team doesn't work together mm-hmm. it's not really a team just yeah. a whole lot of individuals yeah and um, learning lessons like mm-hmm. uh remember back in the day where it did seem like we were fighting against each other a little bit oh yeah back in the day <laughs> when i rode my horse to work uh yeah no but then we've we've built the team and it's taken it's i mean today's team compared Compared to when we first started, it's it's much different. It's much more uh, coherent, I guess. Yeah, since yeah. you use that word, you know, it's it's uh, we're much more of a team yes. than, than a lot of individual players. Yes, yeah, and that's been um, uh, the nature of the team itself. Very many times, somebody in the team will say, "Hey, can we do this as an exercise?" And it's meant for the entire family mm-hmm. of companies. Right. Um, I think there was a, an exercise where we put, uh, "What do we want to stop doing? Start, keep, stop, start." Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So we made a list of what things we want to keep across the family of companies, yep. what we like that's happening, um, what things do we not like and we want to stop doing, and mm-hmm. then what things, what ideas do we have that we want to start doing. And mm-hmm. so everybody, you know, had their list and, and built it out. And then ultimately we, we looked to see how many times something came up. Mm-hmm. And those would be, you know, key factors that we would go, oh, a whole lot of people are saying to stop this. So let's circle that and ditch it. Yep. Um, uh, and, you know, quite a few people had, re- had recommended to do something. Um, and a lot of people said, you know, keep. And so um, doing exercises like that for the family of companies, that teamwork, um, our parties, even amongst the U.S. team and the virtual team. And the virtual team is not just in the Philippines, but they're, you know, across the U.S. Yep. I think um, we've got... Uh, Gosh, Georgia, we've got, I think, North Carolina coming on, Missouri coming on. Um, we just have people, we're in Florida, but our offices yep. in our, our, yep. uh, Ohio. In, so, Indiana. Yeah, Indiana, yep. that's right. Um, at, uh, at Georgia, there's two people in Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, ooh. So, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so just, uh, you know, that teamwork, you know, even virtually, like we've just done a really, really good job of making sure that um, everybody communicates really well, no matter where you are in the mm-hmm. world. Um, and that, that vision... We're getting better and better at the vision. I think that's something that um, uh, CEOs have a hard time doing is making sure that the vision isn't just stuck in their head. Right. Right. That the team actually knows where they're headed. Um, and then there's there's a book called Vivid Vision. So for those of you who are um, are business owners um, or have are, uh, an aspiration to become a business owner, um, read Vivid, Vivid Vision. It's a really great way to put your brain on paper of what you see over the next three years. And when you talk about vision, it's really hard to, to set a vision 10 years r- down the road. You know, so many things change in, yep. in, in in a few years. Even five years is tough, but three years, not so much. It is you can you can get realistic about three years. Is it going to be perfect? Is it actually going to come true? No, um, but it will give you a guiding light. Right? You say here, this is the direction that we're going, and then as you go down that, maybe within the next six months, you, something happens. You go, er, 
it we're just going to tilt it, you know, a little bit this way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the point is, is just to have a, you know, that lighthouse right. saying, this is where I'm going. Um, so I think that that, um, that piece of the vertical, vertical integration is really, really powerful because you're only as strong as the weakest member of your team. Of course. Um, so, yeah. uh, it's just really important that you're working together and that you build this really strong foundation. Um, I recently recorded that 12 part video series that, right. um, is probably going to get released soon, either via, um, YouTube, email or app or a combination of all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> um, so stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. So that 12 part video series was really meant to be short video segments that kind of said, Hey, like for those of you who don't know us or those of you who do know us, but don't understand what we've built here, let us show you what mm -hmm. this vertical integration looks like. Let us show you the foundation that we've built that is so freaking strong. Just try and topple us over. You can't um, because we're so <laughs> super strong and we've just built this foundation that we are able to control all the pieces to the puzzle um, and not every single piece, but most of the pieces, I would say the most critical pieces. Um, and why this is important is because these seven things that we just went over um, is ultimately the, the, the reason you succeed or the reason you fail. Yep. Right. So at the very beginning we said we could have failed oh, because yeah. of the people that we had outsourced things to, um, uh, if we would have had a, kept it in their hands, we would not have made it this far. We had to bring it in house. Just the first two alone. Yes. Renov renovations and, and property, property management. management. That's right. And that goes to risk mitigation. When you're building anything, when you're investing in anything, you always want to mitigate your risks. When I'm on the phone with investors, I tell people why we do volume. Why? Because it was a risk mitigation mm -hmm. piece for us. Yep. It was, I know in real estate, things are going to happen and it's going <laughs> to suck. We're going to peel back a wall and go, crap. Um, and it's going to add 5,000 to our, uh, you know, our rehab budget or 10,000 or whatever it is. We've had um, septic, you know, issues. We've had plumbing issues. We're just finishing up a two plumbing issues at two of our par apartments yep. that were um, unknown. And we had to get the city involved in permits. And it was just insane. That's going to happen. That's yep. real estate, folks. So if you want to be an active investor and deal with that crap, um, join us. It's crazy. It's a wild <laughs> ride. Um, if you want to be a passive investor and, you know, let not, the, not deal with, not all, that deal with all that stuff, um, that's actually who we serve. That's what we love. We love the passive investors because we're willing to go through those things because we've gone through them enough. Um, it's normal to us. We know we're waking up. We know we're getting exposed to the challenges and we know that our job in our business is to be problem solvers. Mm -hmm. All we're going to do is get up every single morning and solve a problem and solve another problem, solve another problem. And that's how we keep on growing is making sure that the companies are in a good place. Our investors are in a good place. Um, so that's how you mitigate risk is because we did volume. We mm -hmm. said, we know it's going to happen, you know, and uh, uh, crap's going to hit the fan. See, so you look at me holding my tongue. Um, uh, and so uh, when it does, who cares? Because we do volume. So mm -hmm. if eight out of 10 deals are good and two out of 10 deals are bad, it does not matter. So it doesn't phase us. We don't get extra incredibly emotional. I used to get really emotional when things went bad. <laughs> but now I'm just like, eh you know, whatever it's part of, it's part of the game. You know, you just know and understand that it's going to come. You wait for it to come, you address it, you fix it, you move on. Um, so risk mitigation, vertical integration is a big piece to risk mitigation. You're listening to the freedom show with Liv and Danny. Um, it's just us today. We don't have a guest. We're talking about vertical integration, but um, don't leave yet because we are going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Add new income streams to your financial statement. Freedom family investments can help own property and get paid rent. Join funds and get paid interest. Wealth is well-being. Own your own future. Freedom Family Investments. Get more time to focus on what matters. Learn which investing path is for you, where to start, and who to trust. Visit FreedomFamilyInvestments.com. Don't forget to leave a review so we know how we're doing and what you guys are enjoying. All right, welcome back. We're so excited to be talking about vertical integration today. Um, it's been a really um, hot topic in our minds of something that we wanted to bring to the table and start talking about more um, so that people got educated on why it's so important to be working with a company like ours and why this builds such a strong foundation for us to be able to continue to grow and continue to add on more companies um, that allows us to serve us as a company and serve our investors as well. It also allows for simpler communication and transparency. So mm -hmm. um, we always say that we're transparent and authentic. Um, that's just first and foremost part of our core values. It's mm -hmm. who we are, to what's what we believe in. It's our character. Um, and in order to have that um, uh, transparency, uh, you it. it it, you need to have vertical integration. Mm -hmm. You have to have all those companies because it's really hard for us to look in somebody else's system or look and see what somebody else is doing if it's not in-house. Um, but in-house, we could 
get to dive into everything and we get to really see what happened what went wrong how do we fix it mm -hmm. um, and that allows communication between us and our investors to be so streamlined um, because we can say we know exactly what happened now we know how to fix it and now we're going to fix it here's a solution and this is uh, the result mm -hmm. um, so those things are incred uh, incredibly important so the reason that we thought vertical integration was so important to talk about today um, is because over the last year, as the market has shifted, <clears throat> we have seen, um, number one, uh, projects fail, um, whether it was um, fix and flip investors um, or hard money lenders um, having defaults on loans from fix and flip investors or multifamily syndicators um, uh, struggling with their deal because they underwrote it <clears throat> and they thought it was you know good but they got a bridge loan um, or they thought it was good but they didn't anticipate this uh, the inflation environment they mm -hmm. didn't anticipate the rising material costs they didn't anticipate the rising interest rates um, and um, there's a lot of things failing and I'm not here to point fingers um, and say that those are bad investors because you simply don't have a crystal ball, right? Um, but the better investors, the people that you want to be aligned with and working with are the ones that are taking control of as many pieces of the puzzle as possible so that when things like that happen, it's not that hard to fix. There's so many levers that you get to pull because you have all the pieces in house um, that you're able to get through through challenges. So we still have challenges, but we are able to get through them because of our volume, because of our vertical integration. And um, I, we have partners, in fact, on, on, a, on a building in Mississippi, and they have, uh, I I think over 2,400, probably up to 3,000 units now, um, right. multifamily. And uh, <clears throat> they said um, uh, we were outsourcing to other property management companies and every single one was failing to our underwriting standards. Um, and so we had to bring it all in-house. And this is during her pregnancy even. Mm. Um, and so she was like, what a wild <laughs> ride. But at least I didn't have to think about the fact that I was pregnant. And what am I going to do? There's a child <laughs> coming. They were just- Silver lining. Yeah, they were yeah, working on go. hiring and then building that whole entire property management team in-house. Vertical integration. That's, they they said after, and this was after 3,000 units, they went, we have to do this. This is critical to our excess. We have to bring it in. We have to have control. Um, and we have another friend, uh, he's in our mastermind, um, that the reason that he is succeeding, he attributes it to the fact that they brought property management in-house. They're bringing renovations in-house. Um, so this is so critical that we thought, hey, we're going to be the people that are going to start shouting vertical integration from the rooftops and start talking about it, talking about the risks involved if you're not vertically integrated, talking about the advantages of being vertically integrated so that you can get more educated. Um, if you're an active investor, you can start thinking about how are you going, going to control and mitigate these risks. If you're a passive investor you can start going oh you know i don't want to work with somebody that doesn't have control over all the pieces of the puzzle i want to make sure that i'm working with somebody that i trust that has a track record and does have everything in house and can solve problems faster and can identify what's going wrong and be able to fix it at their control and desire as opposed to relying on somebody else um so it's just a powerful powerful topic and i really thought it was important to share today um so uh flip yes before we end this episode okay I want you to think of something fun. Okay. Remember, I bring the content. You bring the fun. Oh, I have to say this out loud? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. What is I, it? I, well, what this episode is going to uh, air uh, right before Christmas. So uh, what do you want for Christmas? Oh, crud. See, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'm, this would be fun. <laughs> I think it's fun for me. <laughs> I'm not really good at the whole Christmas thing. I like to give, but um, um, I don't, I'm so blessed that I have everything that I possibly could want. Um, I think what I always end up asking for is I go on like Amazon or something or an Audible mm -hmm. and I start listing all the books that I could potentially read. And I say, okay, here's like, 10 books that so you can choose one <laughs> <laughs> choose one yeah okay <laughs> because i have so many books <laughs> and i'm still catching up on them um but yeah all i want for christmas is my two front teeth <laughs> <laughs> i don't got nothing and all i can do is i <laughs> want a hippopotamus for christmas sorry um uh, no i just want uh, some rudy's breakfast tacos that's all <laughs> that's okay. so much to ask for. Yeah, okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's gonna be fun. We're there. gonna be in Phoenix and Texas. Yeah. Um spending Christmas. So um yeah. All right. Very cool. Uh -huh. Okay. So <laughs> well, that was pretty fun. Thank you for doing that. Uh, wait, let, let me throw it right back at you. Uh -oh. um, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, Rudy's breakfast tacos. I already said. Oh, all right, right, right. Come right, on. Right, right. I thought you were gonna say something about a car. No. Nope. I always expect you to want a car. 
Or sunglasses or I shoes. Did, I didn't know that was in all my choices. <laughs> so let's, can we ask me that again? Ask no, me that again. No, 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 We're done. So we're super <laughs> happy to have you guys here. Thank you for joining us for this episode. Um, we are super Crap. excited uh, <laughs> about the next episode coming up. Um, we enjoy bringing our network to you and talking to these guests, man. We've had some really powerful episodes. So stay tuned. Join us next Wednesday. Um, and until then, uh, happy investing. Bye, everybody. Bye. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions and information on the show are not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss.